if you are studying physics, it's a concept that you must have encountered many times. But do you know what heat is? Really? Let's find out together. Heat is a notion that is involved in so many topics in physics. Thermal physics and thermodynamics, of course, but also engineering, aeronautics, material sciences, space sciences and many more. It is even involved in other subjects like chemistry or biology or geology, etc. Yet, before we try to understand what heat is, we need to understand temperature. So, what is temperature? Consider an object, like this pen for example, and zoom on it really deep. At this point, you realize that the pen is made of various molecules and atoms that we will call here particles. The particles that compose an object are actually moving, and that even if the object is a solid. To illustrate this, let's pick up two neighboring particles of a solid. The particles are bonded to each other, and that bond can be modeled quite accurately with a little string. So if that system of two particles contain energy, the particles naturally oscillate around their respective rest positions. The more energy a system of particles contains, the more the particles oscillate. So the more kinetic energy they have. In a hot object, the particles that compose the object have a lot of kinetic energy, whereas in a cold object, the particles have less kinetic energy. Temperature is how we perceive the average kinetic energy of the particles in the system at the human scale. Check this equation. You can see here that the average kinetic energy of the particles of a system is proportional to the temperature of that system. So, to conclude, the definition of temperature. The temperature of a system is a measurement of the average kinetic energy of the particles that compose that system. Now that we know that, it's time to dive into the main subject of the video. What is heat? Imagine two objects, A and B, at different temperatures. One is at 20 degrees Celsius and the other is at 80 degrees Celsius. These objects are homogeneous, are made of the same material and are isolated from the rest of the universe. The particles of system A move slower than the particles of system B. This is because they have less kinetic energy and this is why we perceive A as being colder than B. Producing a flashy animation for what I want to explain to you now is unfortunately above my animation skills. So instead of representing the kinetic energy of a particle by making it move around, I will use color. The more red the particle, the more kinetic energy it has. The more blue the particle, the less kinetic energy it has. So if we zoom into the two objects, particles of A are blue, and particles of B are red. Now, let's put these two objects in contact and look at what happens at the interface between them. I represented particles 1, 2 and 3 in a blue color because they are part of object A, which is colder, and particles 4, 5 and 6 in a red because they are part of object B, the hotter one. Remember that in a solid, the particles are oscillating. So each particle can collide with its neighbor. Now, of two particles which are colliding, the one with the most kinetic energy will transfer some of that energy to the one with less kinetic energy. At the interface between A and B, particle 4 will collide with particle 3. So particle 4 will transfer some of its kinetic energy to particle 3. We say that particle 4 works on particle 3 it transfers energy. Because of this, particle 3 has now more kinetic energy than particle 2. So when these two collide, particle 3 loses some of its kinetic energy to particle 2. And the same phenomena occurs on the other side. Particle 4 has less kinetic energy than particle 5, because it lost some of it when it collided with particle 3. By colliding with particle 5, it will gain some of the kinetic energy it lost previously. 
but particle 5 itself loses some in the process. And the same thing happens between particles 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. You see, this exchange of kinetic energy seems to spread progressively. It's like if the particles which are in B were transferring some of their kinetic energy to the particles which are in A. The result is that, in the end, all particles in both objects will have the same kinetic energy. At our human scale, we will have realized that the temperature of the two objects is now the same. A and B are now in thermal equilibrium. If we step back and look at the bigger picture, we realize that the particles of the hotter object have worked on the particles of the colder one. They transferred energy. This transfer of energy is called heat and is expressed in joules. If you want, you can consider that heat is the resultant work of the particles of the hot object on the particles of the colder one. The official definition is that heat is a non-mechanical transfer of energy. The term non-mechanical is used to differentiate with mechanical transfer of energy. In other words, with work. To be truthful, I'm not too fond of the use of the term non-mechanical, because by essence, heat is also a mechanical process. But it does differentiate itself from work by its statistical nature. From a macroscopic perspective, we do not see the interaction between individual particles. We just perceive heat as one single process the transfer of energy between one object and the other without any macroscopic mechanical action. That's why, even if I'm not too fond of it, I do consider the term non-mechanical as acceptable. In the end, just remember that heat is the transfer of energy held by the particles of a hot system to the particles of a colder one. In other words, heat is a transfer of internal energy between two systems. I feel someone is spying on me. What? You're here? You're stalking me? While I'm editing videos? Actually, I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It truly encourages me to create new videos. And encouragement, I do need it because I like writing the video, I like shooting the video, but the edition can be so boring sometimes, and it takes so much time, so I really need encouragement there. In the meantime, I wish you the best, and I'll see you soon for another episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao!